Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. And don't forget to leave us a like and a comment. And you can share with a friend if you enjoy it and subscribe so you're notified of new videos. Thanks and enjoy the show. If your heating and cooling system isn't keeping you comfortable, stay tuned. We have a solution for you. Welcome to Today's Homeowner with Danny Lipford. Get ready for a half hour full of projects, tips, and ideas to help you improve your home. Welcome to the show this week. You know the one thing that defines comfort in your home more than anything else is your heating and cooling system. And it's the one thing we seem to neglect more than any other system in the home. Well, that's exactly what's happened with these homeowners. A little neglect, a lot of repair bills, and some very high utility bills have motivated these homeowners to completely replace their heating and cooling system. We'll look at that process this week and along the way show you some tips on how to choose a contractor and how to pick the right air conditioning and heating equipment. Stay with us. Most air conditioning and heating systems will last around 15 years if they're properly maintained. Now this house was built about 13 years ago and over the years the homeowners have enclosed some space down on the lower level of the house that increased the living area but they didn't increase any air conditioning or heating capacity. So as a result these units have really been working overtime. Now, also as a result of that, a lot of repairs have been taking place with different Freon leaks and different other problems with it, and their power bills have been extraordinarily high. So they've decided to completely replace the system from start to finish, including the ductwork. Now this is a split system, which means the air conditioning and heating is handled in that these are compressor units outside, air conditioner compressors. They work in conjunction and have lines that run into the attic and hook to an air handler unit. The air handler has an evaporative coil and it cools down, air blows across it, that's how it creates the air conditioning. As far as the heating, it has a hydro heat system, which actually is kind of a unique system that hooks into the water heater. Lines circulate through another coil within the air handler. Air blows across, and that's how the heat is generated by this unit. Again, all of this will be removed and replaced. But it's so important that you have good quality equipment to start with. And to get an idea of some of the guidelines you may use to choose that quality equipment, we recently spoke with a manufacturer's representative. As a homeowner today, if you're in the, in, you're in the selection process for heating and air conditioning equipment, there's, uh, as you well may know, there's, heat, there's air conditioning, there's heat pumps, and then there's also gas furnaces. Uh, there's two things that you want to keep in mind when you're looking at these particular uh, pieces of equipment. You have sear ratings. That's what rates the heat pumps and the air conditioners, okay? And that's the seasonal energy efficiency ratio. That's, uh, I equate to miles per gallon again. It is like uh, the higher the miles per gallon in your car, the cheaper it is to operate. Same scenario with the heating and air conditioner. The higher that sear rating, the cheaper it is to run that piece of equipment on your utility bills, okay? Now, under furnaces, it's a, it's a little different rating. It's kind of similar, but it's called AFUE. It's the Annual Fuel Utilization Efficiency. And what that does, that rates how much capacity you get out of your furnace. For whenever you, whenever you use gas, if you, put, if you turned on 100% of your gas on an 80%, for example, you'd get 80% out. 20% goes up the flue. Uh, on a 90%, for example, if you get... 100% in, you get 90% out, 10% goes up the flu. So the higher those efficiencies, the better off you are also. And just for an example, if, if you've got a 10 sear, say you've got a 10 sear now, which is the government mandated minimum at this particular time, uh, you've got a 10 sear and you go to 18 sear, you can, you can almost cut your utility bills in half. I'd venture to say almost in half. Our homeowners have made their decision on what equipment they want to use, and after all those years of high utility bills, that high SER rating was very important to them. They chose an 18 SER, which is one of the highest ratings in the country. Now, after you've selected your equipment, now it's time to select the contractor that's going to put all the pieces together. Now, most manufacturers will supply you with a list of contractors in your area that are familiar with and are authorized to install their equipment. 
Now, after you get this list, call a few of the contractors out and have individual meetings with each one to give them an opportunity to survey your home, provide you load calculations on the size equipment that you'll need to keep your home comfortable, and provide you cost estimates on everything that would be involved in installing your new air conditioned heating system. Also, check those references. Maybe even go and visit a few of their recent customers and make sure their homes are as comfortable as they should be. Now, we've already chosen our contractor, and we'll talk with him next, right after our simple solution. It's time to pick up a few tricks of the trade from Danny and home repair expert Joe Truini in this week's Simple Solution. Brought to you by DuPont Tiving. Build it once, build it right. Proper preparation is so important on any paint job you may do around your home. And part of that preparation probably will involve some sanding. Well, sanding flat surfaces isn't that difficult because the sandpaper and the sanding pad is usually pretty flat. But when you have a round surface, like here where we're finishing all these spindles, it's a little more difficult. Now, what I've found that works great is just take a strip of sandpaper and use it almost like a polishing cloth on a pair of shoes and just very gently go back and forth and you can see it contours perfectly to the shape. Even if it tapers like this, it maintains a bearing surface so you get a nice smooth finish on it. Now, I've tried this, but uh, the paper always ended up tearing on me. It, it would tear after just a couple of times if you don't put some duct tape on the back, okay. which works really well. All I did is I took a, this is a 150 grit sandpaper, took a sheet, flipped it upside down, and put a couple of strips of duct tape on the back. Then I used a utility knife to cut it into various strips. Here you see I've got some narrower ones which will fit into the smaller spaces and some wider ones. And what that does is it reinforces the paper and it makes it last. It's almost, you almost can't even tear it. The, well, that's a great the abrasive idea. will wear off first. And another use for duct tape. Now, I, I can see the length of this may limit you a little bit, but still, you could get even um, bigger diameter um, pieces sanded sure. with that, I guess. Yeah, this is about 11 inches long, the length the, of a piece of sandpaper. But you can see, this is probably two and a half, three inches in diameter, and it's still, you have plenty of length to get around it. Okay, all right, great. Well, that works good, and it looks like it'll improve your shoe shining skills. Welcome back to the show. Well, as you can see, the drop cloths are down, which means the work has started to replace the heating and cooling systems in this home. Now, this will make a big difference in the comfort of this family. Now, most of the work is taking place in changing out the old air handler units up in the attic. And that's where we'll find our contractor, Edward Leatherberry. Boy, you can really feel the heat when you start coming up the attic stairs. Edward, I don't know how your guys can handle this all day long. It's almost 100 degrees up here, Danny, but we supplemented a little bit with the second system in the house. Okay, so you're keeping one system running while you're replacing the other one, obviously. I guess comfort uh, for the homeowners as well as a little bit of survival up here. That's right. It gets to 135 degrees. It's hard to stay in an attic without <laughs> a little help. Well, you guys are moving along well. Tell us um, how we've gotten to this point and some of the things that have taken place over the last day or so. Well, we started off with a air handler with hydro heat and an evaporator coil in it with a spider duct system. Mm -hmm. uh, a spider duct system are a bunch of flexible hoses going in every different direction. We took it out and are now putting in the main fiberglass trunk line and it, coming off of that we'll have sheet metal pipe with two inch wrap insulation on top of it. It'll hold up a lot better to the pressures of a variable speed air hammer. Well, I was surprised that you actually removed all of the ductwork. It seemed like it was in good shape. I know it was a different style than this, but uh, why the replacement of everything? For the comfort level of the homeowner and the distribution of the system, uh, you're, you really ought to have a good duct system, and that's not really considered a good duct system. Okay, I see. Now, uh, challenges. I know at this point you usually find a few things that maybe uh, were not anticipated ahead of time. Uh, have you run into anything like that? Yeah, Danny, we have. Uh, the refrigerant lines on the existing systems weren't to the proper size. So these old refrigerant lines run down the wall to under the house and to the slab. We can't follow the place of the older ones, so we have to come up with a new route. We're able to run them around the backside here to stay off the decked area and have found a hollow chase from an old fireplace on the uh, end of the house where the condensing units are. Okay, so you'll be able to route um, all of the refrigerant lines from here out to there, and that's out to the condenser, right? From both systems, correct. Okay, so you have two separate lines going out. Right. Okay, well, I can see where that was a bit of a challenge. Now, 
Um, we talked earlier about load calculation, how important it is for a heating and cooling contractor to really not just um, assume that the existing size units are big enough, but to really um, provide a load calculation. How exactly does that work? Well, the load calculations take into effect the insulation in the attic, mm -hmm. insulation in the exterior walls of the house, uh, window area and direction that they're facing, which is probably the most important, whether they're double pane, single pane, and what direction they face. Okay. Well, one thing about it being hot up here, the guys are really working fast and moving along. And while they're up here working hard, we'll take a look at this week's Best New Products. Now let's join Danny at the Home Center to check out this week's best new product, brought to you by the Home Depot. If you've ever used any of the many automatic nailers that are available these days for any project around your home, you know it can really speed the process up. The problem is you may get tired of pulling that air hose around or listening to that loud air compressor. Well, Sinco, a company who introduced the first pneumatic nailer back in 1951, is kind of revolutionizing the whole category of automatic nailers with their new air-free tool line. Let me show you one of them. Now, this gun is powered, like many tools these days, with a rechargeable battery. And with the kit that also many of the rechargeable tools have, you get an extra battery as well as a very fast charger. But you really won't need to charge it very much because each battery will shoot up to a thousand nails. Now this particular one shoots brads from five eighths of an inch up to two and an eighth inch. They're also available with a finished nailer that'll shoot a nail up to two and a half inches long. So it really is a handy tool, especially if you don't have an air compressor, to be able to utilize a tool like this to take care of so many projects around the home, both interior or exterior. And the whole kit, together, less than $250. Edward and his crew have completed one of the systems in the house, which is making the homeowners very happy because it's a lot cooler downstairs. Now, Edward mentioned earlier about a manual J, which is simply a system to calculate the heating and cooling needs for a given home. Now, you also mentioned that this particular air handler unit was a variable speed type unit. Now, this is very important as far as efficiency and comfort. Jamie Price explains why. This variable speed product not only allows us to give you the comfort level that you need in your house, but it also allows us to run a motor at probably one third of the cost that a typical or conventional air handler would be. Uh, this air handler has the capabilities of timing its sequence on. Uh, one of the things that we try to do in heating and air conditioning, or in the air conditioning mode especially, in the summertime is we want to take water out of the house. That's our biggest drive in air conditioning, okay, is remove moisture from the home. This variable speed product, uh, there's no stopping it when it comes to removing water from the home. That reduction in humidity is keeping this family a lot more comfortable right now. But in the years ahead, they'll save a lot of money on that power bill. Now, even though the new system is a lot more powerful than the other, it's a lot more efficient, and that required the extra expense of adding all new ductwork. Now, if we'd have left the old ductwork in place, Edward told me that it would have probably blown apart once we fired up the new air handlers. Now, speaking of the old system, it used to supply the heating and cooling for the basement area of this home. That's an issue we had to address a few weeks ago. Originally, when this house was built, this whole downstairs area was just an unfinished basement. But over the 13 years that the homeowners have lived here, they finished off these areas into a game room and a nice little home office. Now, they've air conditioned and heated this area by tapping into one of the systems up in the attic and bringing lines down hasn't been very successful. And this is a big concern for the heating and cooling because they have some other plans. Now, the existing garage will be converted to a playroom by the homeowners a little bit later. Now, Edward, how are we going to handle the heating and cooling of this area and the adjacent rooms? I think we found the perfect place for the air handler. Okay, so they'll have to sacrifice a little bit of closet space. A huh? little bit of closet space will have to go. A carpenter will come in and retrofit this closet to build a platform and have the air handler sitting on top of it. Okay, all right. And then as far as um, supply <clears throat> lines to handle this room, I guess some drywall will have to be removed. There'll be some drywall removed in here and also 
some demolition and drywall work in the bathroom behind it with the fur down over the tub. Okay, so a little bit of new carpentry work as well to route those lines back into the, the other area. Now, um, in a situation like this, what about um, the return air and any filtering or anything along those lines? The return air filtering will be done here in the platform. There'll be a filter grill and then just a transfer grill on the door okay. itself. Okay, just so that the air comes through and can be filtered before it goes into the, the air handler. What about location of thermostat in a situation like this where you have several different rooms? Uh, this area right here would be a good area for a thermostat since we're, we are sensing the return air of the system that okay. we're trying to control the system by. Okay, that makes sense. Now, um, what about the venting of this gas unit? How are you going to get the vent out? I know upstairs in the attic where you had the horizontal units, you could just go right out of the roof, but how are you going to handle it here? Well, with this situation, Danny, we chose to use an electric heat pump that doesn't require a vent to go outside. Uh, it's able to be run off electricity so you don't have the gas fumes to worry about. Okay, all right, that brings up a good one. What about getting electricity here? Because we're going to need a 220 line to this, right? Correct. Okay. We have the electric meter is located right on the outside of this wall, so it will be real easy to run the electrical wiring oh, through the closet. electrician will like that, won't he? Right. <laughs> um, and as far as the condenser unit, I know we'll still need the outside unit. Um, how will you position that? We have an exterior wall right here in the back of the closet. So uh, we'll run the refrigerant lines right above the block wall and come out on the uh, higher ground outside. Okay, all right. Well, a little bit of carpentry work, and it sounds like a lot of tear out. Sections of the game room ceiling had to be removed to route the new ductwork. The air handler was positioned in the newly built closet and ductwork was routed through the bathroom and into the game room. Then all repairs were made to the ceiling section. The third system down in the basement is up and running as well as the two units we have that will take care of making the main part of the house nice and comfortable. Now these systems have a couple features I want to show you that are really pretty neat. And we talked about how important it is to remove the moisture from your home. Well, it has to go somewhere, and that's why all AC units have a drain line to move that water to the outside. Well, this one also has a little cutoff device that in the event this gets clogged, it'll cut the unit off, preventing any water from overflowing, damaging some ceilings downstairs. Now, air filtration is also very important, and this unit has a very nice pleated filter. It's fairly large that will trap any of the air particles moving through the return air. But because of the surface area of this and how it's built, it won't restrict any of the airflow that's very important to the efficiency and comfort level of this entire unit. Also, by trapping those air particles, it'll make this unit last as long as it should. Now, these are just a couple of the features you need to talk with your contractor about when you're thinking of replacing your heating and cooling system. Let's head outside for Around the Yard with Danny and lawn and garden expert Tricia Craven Worley. Brought to you by Timber Tech Composite Decade. Less work, more life. Tricia, you must be planning on getting awfully thirsty. A whole gallon of water? Well, I could use a little drink, but so can this plant. I know that's important anytime you're transplanting plants, putting new plants in to make sure they're getting adequate water. Oh, it's so very important because especially with new plants, you never want to let their roots totally dry out. Mm -hmm. And this is a great low-tech way to do it. Okay, how, how are we going to accomplish that with a plastic jug? Well, I've taken this plastic jug and uh, it's a juice jug as opposed to a milk jug because the plastic is a, a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take this skewer and you can use a skewer or an ice pick or something really sharp and I'm just going to poke a little hole in the side here there we go Okay. and then just plant, put it right by the plant another thing you want to do is make sure you loosen the top because that will release the pressure and let the water just drip very very gently onto this plant that makes sense now what about adding like any kind of plant food to this is that a good idea I think you could put a little bit of really mild solution in there, but uh, if your plant is suffering any kind of stress, you definitely don't want to do that. And I guess this would help then if you were away for a few days and had um, a need to water a plant like this, I guess that can nurse it a little bit. It can, and whether it's inside or outside, it works well. So if somebody has plants inside and they want just a little bit of drinking going on, they can put a water bottle in a plant and make sure that there's some kind of container underneath of it to catch any overflow overflow or maybe even putting it in the sink would be a great idea. A great idea. 
Along with the new heating and cooling system came these great thermostats that allow the homeowners to adjust the temperature in the home exactly the way they need it to feel comfortable and will allow them to set the thermostat up or down a little bit while they're away to save even more money. Now replacing your heating and cooling can be expensive so it makes sense to do plenty of research. Hey, thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week. Painting the exterior of your house can be an overwhelming task. Next week, we'll show you how the pros do it. Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to like, comment, and hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified of new videos. And be sure to click around and watch some more videos while you're here.